The Motel of Whispering Pines podcast production by Lynn and Dave, episode 27B, The Whispering Pines Motel in the Darkmoor Maze. Tom and Lucy fled the witch's cottage, rushing down a dark, twisting road, haunted by the thought of what might have happened if they'd stayed a second longer. Just as their lungs burned and their legs felt ready to give out, they saw the road end at an imposing wall of tall hedges, a looming maze that stretched endlessly in both directions. Without thinking, they dove into the hedges, hoping to hide from whatever creature still lurked behind them. But the maze was a nightmare in itself. Hours bled into days as they wandered, lost in the labyrinth of twisted branches and dark corridors. Each turn they took led only to dead ends or brought them back to the same eerie statue of a grinning gargoyle. Exhausted, they began to feel that time itself had stretched and warped in the maze, that they might never escape. Lucy, her voice weak and trembling, finally whispered, Tom, I I can't go any farther. Tom opened his mouth to answer, but before he could speak, a light flickered in the darkness, a warm amber glow bobbing in the shadows. They watched as an old man emerged, dressed in tattered old-fashioned clothing, his face hidden beneath a wide-brimmed hat. He held a battered lantern that cast an eerie glow over his gnarled face, which bore a ghostly smile. The old man, with that too wide smile, raised his lantern high, illuminating the twisted branches around them. Shadows danced on the walls of the maze, creating monstrous figures that seemed to claw their way out of the hedges. His eyes gleamed with a strange hunger as he stared at Tom and Lucy, sizing them up like he was contemplating the best way to cook them. "'Well, well, we don't get many visitors who make it this far,' he rasped, his voice crackling like dead leaves. "'Not many make it past the witch's cottage.' He chuckled, his laugh echoing off the hedge walls in a way that made it seem like the maze itself was laughing. "'Who, who are you?' Tom asked, stepping protectively in front of Lucy, but his own legs wobbled partly from exhaustion and partly because he could feel something strange, like the hedge maze itself was breathing, pulling him deeper. The old man tilted his head and gave a slow, sinister smile. "'Some call me the Keeper of Darkmoor,' he said, and others, "'Well, they don't get a chance to call me anything.' He took a step forward, and Tom could see that the man's feet didn't touch the ground. They hovered an inch or so above it, as if he were more ghost than human. Lucy, clutching Tom's arm, whispered, "'What what do you want from us?' The keeper chuckled again, and this time it was a low, rattling sound. "'The maze wants to play, my dear. It gets so very lonely, and you two make the perfect little toys.' With a snap of his fingers, the hedge walls around them began to twist and shift, opening new paths and closing off old ones in an impossible dizzying spiral. Tom and Lucy staggered as the ground seemed to tilt and spin beneath their feet, the hedges stretching into tall and possibly twisted shapes. The maze now felt alive, pulsing and breathing, eager to trap them forever. Lucy's knees buckled and Tom caught her, his own heart racing as he tried to steady himself. We need to get out of here, he whispered, his voice shaking. But how? Every path just leads back to the same place. Oh, there's an exit, the keeper said, his grin spreading wide, his eyes gleaming. But the maze doesn't let you go until it's had its fun. See, there are rules here, games that need to be played. He leaned in close, his voice a cold hiss. I'd suggest you start moving, because if you stay still too long, the maze might just swallow you whole. Before they could ask what he meant, he blew out his lantern. Darkness enveloped him, and when Tom blinked, the keeper was gone. Only the faintest moonlight filtered through the maze, casting long, eerie shadows. A distant rustling began in the hedges, like hundreds of tiny feet scurrying through the leaves, moving closer and closer. Run, Lucy whispered, grabbing Tom's hand. They took off down the narrow path, their breaths coming in panic gasps as they heard strange whispers following them, ghostly voices chanting and cackling, calling out in a language they didn't understand. They ran for what felt like hours, turning down random paths only to find themselves back at the same grinning gargoyle statue each time. Oh no, Lucy moaned. We're trapped, Tom. We're going in circles. Just then, a loud creak echoed through the maze, and they turned to see the hedge wall shifting again, creating an opening to their right. Desperate, they took the new path, but it only led them deeper into the labyrinth. Strange shapes slithered through the fog ahead of them, shadowy figures that seemed to disappear when they looked directly at them. At last they stumbled into a clearing, and in the center stood a massive wooden sign, painted in thick black letters were the words, Welcome to the Haunted Maze of Darkmoor. Rules for Survival. 1. Never trust what you see. Two, follow the laughter. Three, never look back. As they read, a haunting laugh echoed from somewhere within the maze. It was the same laugh that had come from the keeper, but deeper and louder. Like the maze itself was laughing at them, Tom gulped. Do do we follow the laugh? Lucy bit her lip, clearly terrified, but trying to keep calm. I don't know, but we can't just stay here. Maybe the sign is a clue. 
Before they could decide, they heard another sound, a low growl that echoed from the path behind them. They turned eyes wide and saw a pair of glowing yellow eyes emerging from the darkness. The creature from earlier was back, only now it was bigger, more menacing, with claws scraping the ground as it crept toward them, its teeth glinting in the faint light. Run, Tom shouted again, grabbing Lucy's hand. They darted down the only open path, the growling creature hot on their heels. Every few feet, they passed another sign painted with ominous messages. The maze has its favorites. Only one of you will make it out. Don't stop running or else. The laughter grew louder and louder, guiding them forward through the twisting paths. Exhausted and terrified, they kept running, barely able to see in the dim light, only to find themselves once again in front of the same statue, the same grinning gargoyle mocking them. Lucy collapsed onto her knees, sobbing, we're never getting out of here. Tom knelt beside her, his own strength failing. We will. We have to. The laughter stopped, silence fell over the maze, thick and foreboding, and then the keeper's voice whispered through the hedges. Well, well, you have made it to the heart of Darkmoor. Only one game remains. A single path opened before them, leading to a clearing where a large ancient mirror stood, cracked and covered in dark ivy.